Welcome back to Reread, where I am rereading through the expanded universe in chronological order, something no one should ever do unless they've read it before. Anyway, today I'm going through the Knights of the Republic series, issues 13 through 18, the next six comic books in this series. Basically, it's a three-part, two three-part story arcs uh, as uh, Jareel and Camper have kind of separated from Zane and Griff, our our teams have dispersed in the last comic book series, so the first three issues are basically Zane and Griff, and then the last three are uh, Jarrell and Camper. And what's going on is, first off, with Zane and Griff, man, the the comedy doesn't stop. In fact, this this series is more comical than I remember. I remember having some moments here and there where I laughed, but there are now a ton of moments where I just fall out laughing as I'm reading this. This is re this might be John Jackson Miller's best thing ever. I know in the past I've said Obi Wan, well Kenobi was his novel there, and I, it still may be. I need to reread that one. But man, Knights of the Republic. Oh man, the comedy is just right. Uh, it starts off as Zane is. Uh, asking Griff what, what they're going, what's their next plan? It's to get a ship. He's got a ship coming in. At, it's going to be delivered at midnight. He went, "Who delivers a ship at midnight?" And then he realizes, "Wait a minute, is this stolen? Is this a stolen ship?" Yes, of course it is. Griff's wheeling and dealing. He hires someone to steal a ship. It's a trans, trans trustodian or whatever. I don't really know how to pronounce that word now that I think about it right now. But what Bosk is the, the bounty hunter Bosk is, and so this this. Uh, Tristonian's name is Slicevic? I don't know. They, they, it's, it's like, I don't think there are no vowels in it. Slicevic or whatever. And Slicevic decides, and it's really funny. It's really funny. The, it's not really, uh, this thief is not really a pilot, so it kind of just kind of lands like a thud on the landing bay. And he goes, well, I guess you didn't hire a pilot to steal it. And he went, hey, that cost extra. And Griff says, that cost extra. And it's, like I said, so much, so funny. Because uh, Slicic opens the door, goes yip, and then closes the door again. <laughs> it's just like, what? what is going on? And you're laughing so hard. <coughs> Griff's banging on the door, saying, hey, let me have the, uh, come on, I'll pay you the 9,000 credits for the ship. And Slicic's like, well, you know what? Now that I have the ship, I think I'm going to have you pay me for the ship. Not just that I stole it, but to pay me for the whole ship. And so Griff comes up with a little scheme. He said, let me talk to my henchman over here. And he says, hey, do your little force thing and topple something on top of uh, top of this alien so that I can save. Because uh, Trashonians, like Wookiees, have life debts. And so as the, Griff goes up to talk to Slistic again, some, something falls over and he pushes her out of the way or him. I can't remember if Slistic's gender is him or her. I want to say it's a her, but I can't remember now. Anyway, pushes Slistic out of the way. Uh, it drops, it misses, and he's like, well, I guess you owe me a life debt now. But you know what? We can call it even if you just give me the ship. You know, and Slistic's just so excited because no one really cares about him. And he's like, you know what? No one's ever cared about me. I, I know I want to honor this life debt. I'm yours forever. And Griff's like, oh, no, that's not what I wanted. So now we have another crazy little character to add to this great ensemble cast. And to be honest, there's not much about Slicic, at least for the next uh, six or 12 issues. You don't really see that much of Slicic, which is a good character because later on, uh, he becomes a cook. Uh, they, the the, the uh, ship they end up stealing is a Republic ship that's a cooking vessel. Well, when they try to escape, they run smack dab into the Republic Army and says, hey, there you are, get in line. You know, because they're going to be serving grub to the troopers. They're like, oh no. So to avoid being captured by the Republic and turned in, because they still have warrants out on them, they decide to follow this army, go to the, the, you know, the battle line of where the battle is the hardest hit, where they're fighting the Mandalorians and whatnot, or the Mandalorians are coming, they're getting ready for them. But they're, gonna, they're on the front line serving people meals. And Slicic can cook. Who knew? No one's ever asked him to be a cook before, but he's a really good cook. And so Griff is making money hand over foot. It's military money. And he's like loving this. But Zane has a vision that the entire planet's going to just be just decimated. He's like, hey, look, this is a bad vision. You need to... You know, you need to pack your bags and leave. Now, I should also mention, I skipped over something. He's been, he befriends someone, one of the higher-ups within the Republic uh, Army, 
and he sees Zane do something nice. There's an alien kind of rummaging for tr through the trash to find some you know, leftover food, and he just he said, oh, hold on one moment. He goes up to the alien, brings him to the table, and brings him a free meal, and Griff... <laughs> Is whispering in his ear, that's coming out of your take. <laughs> and Griff has no heart like that. But it's just, there's so much comedy in there. And so, anyway, they Griff does not, wants to leave, but wants to make all this money. So he doesn't want to leave. I'm sorry. He wants to make money. So he decides to stay open for at least breakfast and leave. But now it's lunchtime. Okay, he'll stay for lunch. Okay, now the Mandalorians are attacking. He sees Zane Vision coming through, but he's like, uh, but then the Republic says, hey, the Mandalorians are here in force. We'll pay you for whatever you, you got left. He went, guess we're staying a little bit longer. Then it turns out that they don't have any fuel. They ran out of fuel. They just barely had enough to get the planet, and they don't even have enough to get off of orbit. I mean, they're bone dry. And Griff's like, uh-oh. <laughs> and then the planet gets decimated. Uh, and then we don't know what's ha going to happen to uh, what happened to Griff. Uh, meanwhile, I should say that as uh, Zane has this vision, he goes to visit that his friend in the military, the Republic, tells him he's a Jedi and says, look, you got to trust me. You got to bring me to the Admiral. The guy's like, I don't even talk to the Admiral, but I'll bring you. Well, the Admiral sees through this. He says, who is this guy? Okay, I know who he is. He's Zane Carrick. He's wanted by the Jedi, and he arrests him and puts him in a, puts him in a pen. Well, of course, when the uh, Mandalorians attack, uh, they're getting run off the ship, and they actually have to go and kind of barricade themselves in one of the jail cells just to protect themselves from the oncoming Mandalorian invasion. Zane's sitting there meditating the whole time, and then was like, "Get up and help us." He went, "Okay, if I show you a way out, will you promise to take me will you with me with you?" And he's like, "Yes, I guess." Okay, finally, he said, "I won't. I'm not moving until you tell me that you'll take me." He's like, "Sure." So Zane steps sits up. And the panel he was leaning against falls out. He went, yeah, I've been unscrewing it with the force this whole time. He said, I just got it done right as you walked in. So I didn't want to I didn't want to move or else you'd see that I'd opened it and you would leave me here. <laughs> and then again, comedy, man. Comedy. I love it. I was, I've been loving this the whole time. Uh, but anyway, the uh, Mandalorians attack. They're decimating the planet and Zane is upset because he thinks Griff is gone. That's basically how that three-part story arc ends. The next three-part story arc focuses on Jarrell and Camper. Camper's not doing so well. Uh, Jarrell uh, takes him back to their home planet, try to get help, but then she realizes that the whole time these were the people that Camper was trying to get, you know, get away from. You know, uh, this, this is something we don't know at first because they immediately take Camper in. Uh, now she looks different. Her skin is white. Their skin is re regular pale or tan skin. So they're considered offshoots and kind of separated <coughs> from the rest of the. Uh, uh, they're they're like second class citizens or really just lower class citizens. And so they put on they the her, some of her other fellow white skinned um, Arcanians paint her up, give her makeup so she can go visit or help camp her out in the hospital. Uh, she gets busted, taken to one of the higher ups who basically holds on to her and says, Look, we're going to help Camper out. We want him to get better. He has this weird disease. And it's day to day, but we're going to do everything we can for him. She's like, Thank you. So, will you just stay here and just stay in this room or stay in this tower with me and you'll be fine? She's like, Sure. And then at the end of the comic book, we find out that Camper's fine. Fine. He doesn't even have a sickness. But they're holding Jareel, and if he doesn't finish, because he had, he had started a project with him, and if he doesn't finish it, then Jareel will be hurt, injured. He doesn't want that happening. So Jareel thinks everyone, everything's you know dandy, and that you know Camper's getting the best medical help he can get. But in reality, she's made things worse. She's brought Camper back to the people who he was running away from. Now, to be fair, Camper never told her about much about his past. So Jareel doesn't think any, anything's going on. I love the character of, of Jareel. Looking back on some of my videos, I didn't talk about her hardly at all. I mainly focus on Zane and Griff because I remember them a lot. They were a lot funnier. But uh, Jareel, or however you pronounce her name, uh, I, I really, really, really do enjoy her character. I think she's... I, 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 she and Camper have been enjoyable. They're great as an ensemble cast. By themselves, it, it isn't as boring as I once thought. I thought, well, without Zane and Griff's witty banner, and there's a lot of humor there, there's not as much humor uh, when you skip over to their, their book. But there doesn't, doesn't always have to be humor. But anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.